What's going on guys, welcome back to another video, and this is make Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. This is part 7 of 10, and it will be just the Make a Friend room, which you can see I am showing you right now. Uh, this is one of, I think, two of the mind-losing parts. The other one is the pit room. But anyway, that's really all. That's, like, the room, pretty much. So, with that being said, enjoy the tutorial, and I will catch you on the flip side. So, this room is going to be done a little bit weirdly. We're going to start with the machines that you come out of, and then we're going to do the walls, and then we'll figure out the rest from there. So, the materials you need to start off for these little machines are stone slabs, which we will use for blocks... Stone stairs, which we'll use for stone stairs. I had to make the joke. Yellow concrete. Warp stairs. Warp slabs, which we will also use for planks. Red concrete. Birch trap doors. I opened the door category. And it's just great. Uh, levers. And lightning rods. And that pretty much finishes everything except for a few minor things, but those aren't really a problem anyway. So if you come to the opening here, what you want to do is just below this, I guess below and out of this bottom cobbled deep side stair, you want to place a stone block. You'll notice if you're looking at my grid enough, uh, we're not inside the wall, so you'll bring it in with another stone. I don't know why I felt like pointing that out, I just did. Bring that stone left and right from this perspective with an upside down stone slab, and then bring either of those stone slabs each up with two stone blocks. On top of those, you can place another stone slab, and then place a stone block in between them. This is kind of the point where you should probably bring the two sto stone blocks on the sides, just kind of towards the vent to connect. Don't bring the slab or anything, be or the slabs or anything, or this top block, because those will get dealt with later, kind of a little bit differently. So, oh, I missed a material, that's fine. On top of this top stone block, you want to place another stone block, and then wrap it on the at least three sides that are on the side with upside down stone stairs that are on the side, what? Just place a bunch in front and to the left and right. On top of that, you can place a three by two of yellow concrete. And then on top of the middle of yellow concrete here, you'll place a couple of warp stairs. On the front middle, it'll face forward. On the back middle, it'll face back. Just because of that inventory thing in the block that we're missing is literally the next block we need, I'm going to tell you to essentially copy that to the right two more times, except you want to leave a one block gap in between each one, and you don't want these corner slabs. So you want that for the, the opening, and again, you will leave another one block gap and do the same thing again. Don't forget the top. That would be important, I think. Just slightly, though. Boop, 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 boop. You'll see why those are different later. Anyway, you'll have this. You can now get rid of your stone slabs and stone stairs and get out black concrete for just a moment and smooth quartz stairs. We might as well kind of finish these off. You want to place inside of each of these black concrete just a block behind them inside of the stone like that. You can then get rid of those and get out black stained glass, which we won't use quite yet, but we will, in fact, get out. So, below these bottom stones on each of them, you will place a red concrete, or I guess if you want to place a yellow, you can. Because you'll then wrap that red concrete in smooth quartz stairs the same way you did at the top with that stone block, except these are not upside down. Just like so. Bring each outer smooth quartz stair down with a red concrete. And then you'll surround the bottom half of that red concrete in warp slabs, except for the corners. And these will end up connecting, and that's fine. There's nothing really wrong with that. But it will give you this regardless. You can then yet again take the red concrete and bring each one down with two yellow concrete. 
We're, we're almost to the floor, I swear. You can see that my grid is uh, almost ramming us in the face now. Like so. You'll take the top middle yellow concrete and place a birch trap door over it, and then you'll just open it up against the yellow. I have the handle facing down. It is more logical that you do it that way as these flaps do open up, as I think one of them is a little bit open, and you do see them get open when you act activate the machine. Anyway. Get rid of your, I guess, smooth quartz stairs and get out polished blackstone slabs. Which we'll also use for blocks, because underneath each birch trap door, you'll place a polished blackstone block. It'll make more sense later. To the left of that polished blackstone block, you'll place a warp stair that faces kind of back into the, the block, like this. Which would be to the right. To the, well, also right of these polished blackstones, you'll place a warped slab. Between the yellow concrete and, I suppose, also off the left and right, you'll place warp slabs off this, again, still the bottom row. Don't place anything in the corners yet, though. Underneath each, or at least the front here of the, uh, the, like, polished black stone and the stair and slab on the other side, you'll place red concrete below. Extend to the left and the right from each red concrete with a warped plank, and then you will also bring these back on the far right and left just by two, so they fill in the gap. Off of the warped stair, you will place a lever off the flat side of it, which is, I guess, the only side you can place a lever off of. And then you want to do that, uh, that crouch place thing and place a lightning rod on top of the lever, and this will create just a little bit of a longer lever. It doesn't connect perfectly. You can actually see on that one when I have the wall not there. It, like, literally connects with one pixel, but it works. Whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna actually do something hilarious. You guys are gonna find this hysterical. Not really. You want to take each polished blackstone block and bring it towards you with a slab. Then go four diagonally down with an upside down slab. Then bring them each towards you again, and then you can connect them together. Off the far right, you will bring this upside down slab right by two. Back diagonally, right one. Right by 15. Forward diagonally, right one. Forward two, forward diagonally, left one, and left one. We unfortunately can't really continue beyond that because that's when machine number one gets in our way, and yeah. But anyway, I, I thought that would be absolutely hilarious to just build that right now. Not really, I'm being sarcastic. Clear your inventory and get out. Polished andesite. Polished granite. Gray concrete, I guess. <laughs> Granite slabs, I also guess. Acacia logs or wood, I guess it doesn't matter. I need to stop saying I guess, I suppose. Uh, black concrete, where? Right, it's liter literally in the open concrete section. Mind blown. Polished diorite. And we're gonna have the texturing blocks, which are red concrete. As previously mentioned, it is now cyan concrete, and we can't get out yellow terracotta. So upsetting. Not really. So, head to the machines that you have made. And first off, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to want to, behind each of these stone slabs, you'll place a polished andesite, and then you'll have another one kind of up diagonally in between them. So if you head inside the vent, you'll just see the this. A little bit unfortunate, but oh well. Anyway, behind this whole ordeal of uh, machinery. You want to place a row of polished andesite that is just as long as the machines like this. You can see it where that starts and ends. You'll then bring it to the left of the vent, which is towards the sun for me, by, I love not knowing numbers, 10 with polished andesite. Then bring it forward by 12. Then 
right by four. And then you will place in front of that inside it or in the floor six polished diorite. And then a polished andesite on above the floor from there. And then forward with 13 polished andesite. Like this. Then from there, this is where I get out my notes because I have notes for this room. You want to go right with 37 polished andesite. And then in the floor going backwards, you will place 31 polished dire. Let me just break all this first. And then behind that, a polished andesite. Not in the floor. And then you should be able to connect it back to the left. I will give you the number just so you can make sure everything lines up. It should be 18 polished andesite. Like that. I always fear that I'll mess that number up. Like a number that I don't have written down and it should just be a simple connect number. But maybe I like count it and it's actually 17. I don't know. Just random thought in the middle of a video. Uh, so, before I bring the wall the rest of the way back, uh, you want to take this row of polished die right here and just bring it down like an X amount of rows. It's not really a number. I'll give you the one I have though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... We'll call it 10 rows, just, just for fun. And then I will need to break my glass again. And this part of the wall, I wouldn't recommend texturing. I don't even think this should be polished diorite, to be honest. But hey, you never know until you make it. That What? It's only been 11 and a half minutes. Well, it already has been 11 and a half minutes. We have a square on our floor and a couple of meticulously shaped things. You don't realize, like, when I'm building something like this, maybe this room would take me, like... Let's say two hours to prototype, but if I happen to get everything perfect first try, maybe it's like an hour. And then in a tutorial, it's like closer to that two hours than it is that one hour. Uh, just because of command stuff even as well. Uh, anyway, just you will then take these polished andesites again, these kind of end ones, and bring them right an additional 21. You can see that lines up. Nice. This number also doesn't have to be that. And then connect the end ones together with black concrete. So yeah, as I mentioned, they don't have to be this. Like, you can make it a little shorter, a little longer. I'd go longer rather than shorter, but it's up to you. You could even add, like, the, the glass layers, which do get added later, I know. They get added in the pit room. So that will be fun. If you... Just, uh, just commands, like, that's that's really all. Speaking of commands, uh, you want to fill in not this right half. You will leave this alone for now, but you want to fill in the left half of your floor in with polished diorite. And we're going to do the, the old fun game of texture that floor with our three blocks. You can't just get rid of uh, either of these once you finish to get the other one out. So as mentioned, I'm going to use a, a slash ill command because that's what I just typed. To fill in the floor at least. 1100 blocks. That saved me a lot of time. And I'll just fill in this little corner manually. We'll worry about that hallway also later. You know, it's not really a concern. But yeah, I'm probably going to go really light with texturing this room because frick big rooms. That's, that's my philosophy. Big room slander. And also I'm lazy. That's pretty much the main reason. Like, I mean, the, the big room thing has to do with it because I don't want to texture a big room. Oh yeah, there's a hole in the floor in this room too. One of those weird ones with light emanating out of them that you can't actually fall through, but they're there. I, I don't know. I would probably texture more than I am, by the way. But as mentioned, I'm lazy, so... Plus, this isn't the actual version. This is just some random version. There you go. Yeah, that's not really a lot, but... Because some of those will also get removed not very long from now. So, take all of your polished andesite... And just bring it up by 21 rows. Uh, 
Again, I really recommend using a slash fill command. This is vital for something like this. Uh, we'll have to punch into these walls for one, the windows, and for two, the... I think they're rust stains, but I'm not positive. They look like rust, but also like with Plague Time Co., you, you can't really assume that it's rust. Because you're going to make that assumption that it's going to be something horrid. But regardless, we're going with the rust for now, because that's the, the, the more... That's the answer we hope it is, really. It should be about there. That might be too tall. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. I think I nailed it. Yeah, I was just barely, but it it. Ooh. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'll just do a keep command. So if you have this and you want to just do keep, it will still fill in your vent hole, which you can just come back in and just go bloop bloop bloop, but. Yeah, it then won't destroy the black concrete. We didn't use the black stained glass. That's so awesome. Get rid of your yellow terracotta and get back out black glass for a second. Once you've done the walls. I forgot a wall, though. I will I will give you a second as I fill in this wall. And also, I wouldn't worry about the black concrete unless you want to. But anyway. Over the... Not the, the one that you come out of, but the other two... Of the whatchamacallits, you want to fill them in with black glass. Basically, just everything that you can at, in the top two rows here. I didn't actually fill in the middle before, but I will this time. Up oh, my wall, no. As in the, the middle of these. Although, I, it literally doesn't make a difference. Because you can't tell. Anyway. It'll give you that. It's not really a huge deal, but... Okay, now we're gonna work or focus on the the black concrete. So, if you brought the polished diorite down by ten rows, you essentially want to bring the bottom row back with black concrete, and essentially join it with the back wall, which should also be black concrete, which will also get brought all the way up. So, essentially, you're looking at all of this being black concrete. The little lower portions here on the sidewalls will just be polished andesite, nothing really crazy happening there. But, yeah, the floor and the back wall are black concrete. On this back portion. That was a weird noise. I like, didn't feel exactly good to make either. I didn't intend to do it, it just kind of happened. Although, I, I wish I was looking towards OBS when I did that, because I would like to have seen how loud that was, because it sounded loud to me. But also, that could be because I'm just here. You know, it came from me, so it would sound louder. That's a weird sentence as well. The amount of out-of-context things I say in tutorials when I'm on some random rant is definitely next level, but also they're pretty funny, because... Like, they, they make sense in the situation, but when you take them out of the situation, you're like, What did he just say? Okay, uh, can I go down a block? That's two blocks, thank you very much. I can indeed count. Only sometimes, though. Also, one thing, I think I've talked about this before, but if you are, like, smart with your commands, you can get more than, whoopsies, you can get more than one uh, slash fill out of one coordinate. Like, I could, I could just use that corner there in between the two, and I got both this floor and this wall, assuming that I actually go to the right corner, though. Anyway, you should have this. A block above the tops of your walls now. You want to fill in your ceiling with acacia wood. And the ceiling will be essentially going, like, towards the black concrete and towards this wall. I would just fill in, like, with a straight slash fill command. I wouldn't even worry about going beyond this gap. But you see, I'm just going to go here and go all the way over. And... If you're doing this with a command, I recommend just, again, walking here. You see how when I walk back and forth, it's moving the X coordinate? You want to essentially be just doing the same thing that I'm doing. And if you see that that X is moving, go do slash fill, whatever, acacia underscore log, I guess. And then it'll do a bracket. And it should give you the prompt there. You see how it says pillar axis in the bottom left? Uh, if you're on keyboard, you can just hit tab and it'll do that. Space equals... And for me, it will be X. It will either be X or Z. So I guess if you don't know, just 
take a guess. And if it's facing this way where you can see the the uh, rings of the wood on the above the black concrete, then you did it right. Again, that will go further over here, but it literally doesn't matter because it just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know what you want from him. Anyway. We should have kept the, the yellow terracotta and cyan concrete. It's fine. You can get rid of your polished diorite and your black glass and get out those two materials. Which again are yellow terracotta and cyan concrete. Because I want to finish this wall right here. Because it's kind of empty and sad. So, if you're looking at the gap like this, you want to take the left half of it, and going up, you want to place three red concrete, three yellow terracotta, a red concrete, three yellow terracotta, three red concrete, and then a cyan concrete. On the... Well, yeah, on the right side, you'll do... A similar thing, well, it's I would say something, but never mind, I'll just do it from the bottom again. So three cyan, three yellow, one cyan, three yellow, three red, and then one yellow. Each of the little one block things, you can bring them each in with by two with their respective block, and they should connect like this and almost create segments. You'll then essentially make the same archway in each of them. So, on the yellow terracotta here at the bottom, you'll place a row of yellow at the top, and then place an additional yellow terracotta in each of the top corners. On the next yellow section, which is the, the one out of two in this kind of square here, you'll do the opposite. You'll place it at the bottom, and then place it in each bottom corner. The red above it, you'll do the same as the bottom yellow, where you place a row of red at the top, and a red below each corner. So you have this for the archway. You will fill in this circle here kind of towards the top end with polished andesite, and then also the wall in above this can be polished andesite. This does look kind of goofy, so what I would instruct you to do is bring the row of polished andesite off either side of this and just bring it out with a row of gray concrete that goes all the way up to the ceiling. And I'm gonna be smart and just mark it like that from the top. There you go. That looks a little bit better. It's also how it is on the build, I just didn't, I didn't like just decide to do that because it looks better, no. Now, for the next step. Around the, I guess, top of border of every wall, except for the black concrete back wall, you wanna place just some gray concrete kind of going around. This is like a pipe or something? I don't know, but there's some sort of trimming going on up here. In which I have added, which is there in the game. Specifications. Sometimes I do things because I'm dumb, other times I do things because they're in the game. <laughs> Suppose that's the, the message you should get from most of these tutorials. Now, for the wall texturing, or I guess the windows, not the wall texturing. We're gonna actually mark the windows through a very, very easy method on the right wall, which is now this wall, that's what I determined, where the um, machines are that we built first. Just behind the, or yeah, just behind this one here, kind of up against the wall, you'll place a pillar of gray concrete going all the way up. As you can see, it's just kind of behind everything. From the polished andesite now in the top corner in front of this, you will, from this perspective, count right by three and down one, and you will break going down three polished andesite. You will then break six more rows to the right of this. Leave a two block gap, break six rows, just as a quick side note with the windows, uh, as you can tell, I have only realized this later. These windows are seven blocks long, which doesn't affect the rust on this side, really. But it does, because I already had this first one as seven. But it, it does kind of screw things up a little bit. So if you notice this measurement will like look like it's here on the window. It's just because I have the windows wrong at this point. But yeah, it gets fixed there because I realized that when I counted over a certain amount, I was further on the window than I should have been. So yeah. Two block app, six rows. So you'll have three of these windows. Yeah. 
you want to do the same thing on the other side, except you won't have this gray concrete. So I'd essentially just like take one window and just see, make sure that your coordinate doesn't change. So I'm at 1072 and I'll just walk across and I'm still at 1072. So I'll break here and then go two, three, four, five, six. And I should be a block too low if I am correct, which I am. The only thing that isn't symmetrical at this point in time will be the They like rusting. But anyway, you'll line the bottom of these window sills with granite slabs and the top with upside down granite slabs. Fairly simple. Why are you like this? I I don't understand. Like, who hurt you to do this? Anyway, one thing I find very funny about these windows is they both overlook vent segments. Like, they're not obviously in the vent or anything, but like, you figure that if there's a vent here, there's a building here, right? Like, these windows don't really lead anywhere, and where is this build in the scheme of things? I mean, obviously you can see that it's far to the side here, but these windows, at least this side, would look into the middle of the build. Maybe this side you could argue they don't, but... I don't get it. I don't know. Anyway, enough of those thoughts. Again, I would do the same thing that I instructed you to do with the windows on the garage room, where I just, if you go outside, just kind of line these with granite a block outside of them. This isn't really a requirement, as as I mentioned, but it... I don't know, I just prefer to do it. It's really cool. I'm so glad that I put that in the wrong spot. <laughs> it's always fun to make fun of it, though. I don't actually care. I just find it funny to... I don't know. Sar sarcasm is in my blood, I guess. Maybe I am the sarcasm. Anyway, there you go. We'll fill these with glass later. If I don't remember to tell you to do that, they're just gray stained glass. So. You know what? We're, we're switching again. The black concrete is the back wall. So, if you are looking towards it, you will come to the left side, and I will actually show you where all of the rust is. It only resides on the left and the right wall. So, if you go to the left and you go to this first window... You will break the two polished andesite that are just in front of the bottom two blocks, like this. You'll then break an additional one down, back two, down one. From the bottom, you'll leave a two block gap and break two granite. Then from this uh, backmost one, you'll break one below and one above. And then from this one, you'll break back three, count back forward one, and then break up two. From that, you'll count up to forward two and then break two. I would fill it all with polished granite now because it's looking a little bit weird if I just show you an empty space and not the actual holes filled in. There you go. There it is around one of the windows. As I mentioned earlier with the accuracy things, these aren't perfectly accurate either. Uh, some of them are like this window is accurate with the rest. Don't ask why I decided to do that, but not all of them are. So if you come to the middle window, You'll count to the, not the backmost block, but one in front, and you'll count to the third polished andesite down. You will break going down from that seven andesite. Three, four, five, six, seven. You'll break a row in front of that that is five, so you're just taking one off the top and bottom. And then you'll break a row in front of that that is two, where you take one off the top and two off the bottom. Right of the row of seven, you'll break the middle three, which should be in line with the two, and then just one down. From the top of that row of three, you will count right by three and break this this andesite. Down one, back one, down one, back two. From the top andesite here, you'll go da back, up diagonally, back, back, up, back, up back too. And then again, all of this should be polished granite. I'm like, I don't know, brain cells, man. They just, they aren't working. Anyway, that should be this side of the wall rusted up and nicely, I guess. How nice can rust really get, though? On the opposite side, if you come to the backmost, frontmost window, sorry, this one, you will... Above the front two granite slabs, you'll break these, and then from the front more one, you'll break down diagonally forward. From that count down one, break this, break down diagonally back, 
And from this one, you will break back one, and also from that one down, too. Head in between the first and second windows, and you'll break the kind of bottom row here. You'll break the one above the front more half, which is this one, or I guess also I'll call it right now. And then below the left half, you'll break down two, and from this row of three, you'll break the middle one left. From this gap here, you want to then count left by four, down one, and break four, and as I going down. You'll then break the middle two each left by one, and out of those two, the top one also right by one from that. You will then take the top block here, and from it, count left by four, and up by two, and you'll break this andesite, one down, three to the left, and then you'll break from this row for the middle two down each one. From the furthest left one, you'll leave a one block gap and then break three. Break this whole row down by one, the left two down again, and then the leftmost one down one more time. From the top left corner of this window, you'll just break left by one and also up by one from it like that. And also from the top right, you'll break the block above it and one to the left. And then fill all that in with polished granite. There's still a little bit more rust to do, though, on the base of... Not quite the base of the wall, but lower on the wall than these windows are. I just didn't do it at the same time because it's lower. I don't know what other reason I would really have, I guess. Anyway, you should have hopefully something that looks like this, barring any screw-ups on your breaking and placing. If you take the furthest right polished granite thing, which is this one, and you take the rightmost block of it, or I guess the, this row of three, you will trace it all the way down and then come to the fifth and side up from the floor. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Break it, then one left, one up, one left, up two. From this top one, count left by six. Break this one, down one, down diagonally, left one, and down one, and then all this will be polished granite as well. We can finish up the gray concrete pillars because there are a few more of them that are kind of scattered around. Just having the windows in place makes them kind of easier to, to point out. So if you head to the left side of the side with the machines on it, you will head between these last two windows and specifically the front more half or front more of these two blocks and you'll place a full row of gray concrete here. On the right side, there is one actually in the identical position between the second and third window front half, like this. There's a couple like polished basalt pillars and stuff as well, but we don't have polished basalt and that's for later anyway. Just like this. Now, what would be our next course of action? Clear your inventory. That's that's where I'll go. And we're going to do the, I guess, the main feature of this room. Well, first off, get out gray stained glass so I don't forget and just fill in each inside each of the windows. I guess back a block or inside of them by a block with gray stained glass. Hopefully sort of like this if I could place better. There we go. Don't forget to do both sides also. It's kind of an important part of windows. What? Not windows in general. Just just this particularly. Just like that. Looks a little bit better. Now you can get rid of that and get out for the next portion. Yellow concrete. Smooth quartz blocks. Polished blackstone buttons. Warp stairs. Mangrove trap doors. Oh good, we need gray stained glass again anyway. That's very funny. Uh, We'll go... Light gray concrete, red concrete, and I guess cyan concrete. We're gonna, this is gonna become like an inventory changing mayhem. So, on the left side here where you have the, 
where the kind of slabs go left arrow, just kind of randomly diagonally left. You'll find the third slab back from that, and you'll place just a yellow concrete either side of that slab and bring it up by one. Place a smooth quartz block on top of either with a polished black stone button off the front, and then a yellow concrete in the middle. Off the smooth quartz blocks, you'll actually place warp stairs. So off the side of it, you'll place an upside down stair above that normal stair, and then in with another just normal stair that faces the other direction. You'll essentially get some Mickey Mouse looking man. The rest of the yellow concrete you can just cover in mangrove trap doors on the sides, at least. You'll then take the, not the polished blackstone slab in the middle of this, but just one back from that, and the rest of the uh, polished blackstone slab is kind of around this hook, will just be covered in gray glass. From this final one, you will count both left and right by two and place a light gray concrete. Bring it up by one on either side, and then go up diagonally in one. You will then connect together. Bring each light gray concrete forward with three cyan concrete, and then a red concrete. Like so. Get rid of your light gray concrete, mangrove trap doors, warp stairs, and that'll actually be it that you're getting rid of, and get out smooth, actually also smooth quartz blocks, I think, yes, and get out smooth quartz stairs instead, black concrete, nether brick fence, and we'll go with an item frame, again, our inventory will just get crazy. You'll take the first and third rows of cyan concrete and just kind of f basically fill in with black concrete. If you wanted to just straight between all of it, you could, I guess. That would work. At the front here, you will place going left to right in the bottom row of red concrete in the middle. You'll place a smooth quartz stair facing right, smooth quartz stair facing left, and then another smooth quartz stair facing right. Above the top half, you want an upside down stair facing left, gap in the middle, and then another upside down stair facing left. In the middle, you want a smooth quartz slab, which you can get rid of your smooth quartz stairs for. You will then take the middle cyan concrete on the right side, and you'll place a nether brick fence kind of just like on this little diagonal. Place an item frame on the front of this, and then we can do another little bit of an inventory clear, where you get rid of your black concrete, nether brick fence, item frames, and smooth quartz slabs, and get out, hold on, I moved, a clock, polished blackstone stairs, dark oak trap doors, and a lantern. That should finish off this guy. So, in the item frame, you want a clock, and off the front row of cyan concrete, you want, an, you want a set of upside on polished black stone stairs facing kind of away from the middle on the two top side blocks like this. That looks so goofy. Then, place a gray stained glass on top of either one, and surround it in dark oak trap doors on every side except for the front and the inside. Like this. Are you guys ready to clear more inventory stuff and get out more stuff instead? Get rid of your clock, your polished blackstone stairs, your dark oak trap doors. Actually, quickly, I almost forgot. Uh, on the back middle cyan concrete, you want a lantern, and then you can get rid of that too. You can get rid of your cyan concrete. So you just have these four materials left and get out. Gray concrete. Warp slabs. Polished blackstone slabs. And we'll go with... Andesite blocks, I guess. So, from this point... We can bring the, the slabs still through. So you want to take this bottom middle smooth quartz stair and bring it out with three upside down polished blackstone slabs. 
Go forward diagonally, right one. Oh, we still have an empty slot. That works nicely. Then bring it right by five. Back diagonally, right one. Back one. And then you'll go up diagonally back with an upside down polished black stone stair that faces back. So it'll be this. Behind that, you want an upside down polished black stone slab. And then two gray concrete. On top of that second gray concrete, you'll place two andesite. And in front of that top andesite, you want an upside down warp slab. So then on top of this warp slab, you want three gray concrete. You will then go back with five. Down with three. And then place a gray glass. A polished black stone block and then a red concrete here at the base inside of this gray glass you probably want a black concrete which I guess you can get rid of your warp slabs to get out like so you will actually also take this original gray concrete here and just bring it down with one gray concrete so you'll have something that looks weird basically you will take this bottom gray concrete here at the front and bring it right with a red. Then go up diagonally, right one. Up two. Up diagonally, right one. Up two, and then left two. You will then take that original gray concrete again and bring it this time left with two red. Then go up two. Up diagonally, left one. Up two, and then right two. And you can just bring kind of the sides of this back with red concrete until you reach the back, where you will end up filling in the black, filling in the back ultimately with just flat red concrete. So the the sides and the back are just basic. The front is a little bit different though, so I am just kind of waiting to. Also the top you can fill in, but I'm just kind of waiting to do anything because I want to place the eyes. It's kind of the big thing that we're missing right now. Anyway, you'll have this. It's starting to resemble something a little bit more, I think, but still could be could, could use some work. Uh, get rid of your black concrete again and get out polished deep slate blocks. And essentially in either top corner at the front, you'll place a polished deep slate block. And then the rest of the front can be filled in with red concrete. Make sure you don't block the andesite. Like that. You want to find, so there is no middle here on the top, unfortunately, but you want to find the back more of these two middle blocks, and left of this gray concrete you will place going up three gray. Then get rid of your gray concrete and your polished deep slate and get out prismarine brick slabs and prismarine brick stairs. On each side that you can, you'll surround this bottom gray concrete and prismarine brick slabs. You'll then do the same thing with this top gray concrete with upside down prismarine brick stairs. In each of the four corners, you want upside down prismarine brick slabs, which then you can bring that whole kind of square up with just a row of prismarine bricks. To cover up the gray from the top, I also placed a prismarine brick slab here in the middle. Get rid of your prismarine brick slabs and prismarine brick stairs yet again, and you can get out. Cobbled deep slate walls. And... We'll go with stone. So, off of the right side of this thing... You want to take this row of three red concrete here, kind of towards the bottom. You have this column, I guess, or this diagonal. Off the right of the middle block, you'll place a cobbled deep slate slab. Go up diagonally, back one, back one, down one, and then from the, I guess, topmost block of these, of this, uh, these two, you'll place one up diagonally, right, up one, back one. And then from that, you will count 
back one and then just down to just below this diagonal where you'll place another wall. This is the setup you have. It doesn't make sense, but it's fine. Off the back of this machine, you'll take this polished deep sl polished blackstone block, excuse me, and bring it back with three upside down slabs. Go back diagonally, right one. Right by six. Forward diagonally, right one. Forward by two. And then forward with five, sorry, six polished blackstone blocks. You'll then go down diagonally forward with the polished blackstone block. Forward one. Down diagonally forward again, which should be in your floor. Forward five. Forward diagonally right one. Right by four. And then up diagonally right with a slab, which will then be brought right with an upside down slab. Anyway, from there, the entire, like, two, or I guess the entire conveyor belt here wants to be covered in gray glass. Except for this, these final four blocks here. It'll be these two slabs and these two blocks, which you'll leave open. And everything else will have gray glass on it. Lord, this is a fun time. Like this. Let's add the yellow guy in here. So, below the polished blackstone block road that you have here, you want to place a yellow concrete under each one, except for the front one. You'll then bring the yellow concrete at the front here, right by three. And you will take, not the end block, but one block to the left and bring it up by four. Then go left three. Up one, left one, down one, left one, down one, right one, and then down by three. Take either of the bottom two blocks and extend them each left by one. You'll then bring this whole yellow concrete ordeal back by four. And also make sure you do bring this block back here. However, just in this block, if you want to place it at the front, it's a stone. But behind it, it will be yellow. That is where the... is a button. I think it's like an emergency button or something. I don't remember what it does. It's just there. I don't actually think you can use it, though. I If memory serves, that is. Which it doesn't sometimes. Just like that. Off of the top right hand corner, you'll place a polished blackstone button, and you'll place one not really in the top left hand corner, it's just essentially straight across by four blocks from the other one, and you can see where that is, that button. I think we can clear inventory. You need the gray glass, but we're gonna clear it anyway, because the gray glass is just one of the many. And you want to get out, mangrove buttons, or a mangrove button. Bamboo slabs, chains, gray stained glass, dark oak trap doors, birch buttons, and I guess we'll actually start to work on a different portion. So light blue concrete, andesite walls, and a nether brick fence. So, still paying attention to this guy. Off that stone block I mentioned earlier, you'll place a mangrove button. Left and right of the polished black stone blocks, you want bamboo slabs just kind of inside of the this dude's mouth, I guess it is? I don't really know. I don't know why they thought this was an appealing marketing strategy for children, but that's beyond me, frankly. You want to take the front block, one off the left and right here at the top, and you'll place a chain above it. It won't be even. You can see that it's just, it is straight one off the sides. No other business. Place a gray stained glass on top, and you'll do the same thing you did over there. You'll cover the top, outside, and back with dark oak trap doors, and leave the front and middle open. Like so. 
The rest of the top can be filled in with birch button, or can be covered in birch buttons, except for the right and leftmost rows. Those kind of just stay open. Like this. And that's this guy done, I believe. Yeah. So, if you head back to the left side with these machines, these are such a, an important piece. You want to be in line with this middle conveyor, and I have a yellow terracotta on the floor here, but you can see where I am, I am highlighting. From this diorite, you want to count left by six, and break this diorite. Break three going back, and then break five rows to the right. You'll then take the middle four blocks on the front and back and break an additional row out and fill this whole thing in with light blue concrete. So this is a six by six square without the corners. We're evolving. From the, I guess, back half of this circle, you'll have these middle two light blue concrete where you'll place andesite walls on top of. And from that, you'll go forward diagonally to the left by two with nether brick fences. Clear your inventory and get out smooth quartz slabs, just for now, actually, and on top of each of these blocks or fences or whatever, you'll place slabs. In between these two nether brick fences, you'll place an upside down smooth quartz slab as well. We're starting to hit the nitty gritty of things now in this room. So we're going to do the walkways next, because I said so. Get out polished blackstone slabs. Monster spawners. I did not realize how long this room was going to take. I'm not going to lie. We're, we're getting to that point to where it's like, good lord, just stop. Bamboo trapdoors. Dark oak trapdoors. Iron trapdoors. Oak trapdoors. And what else do we even need? Cyan terracotta. Grey concrete, nether brick fence, and I think we'll go with that for now. So, if you head to the front left of this room, which is this kind of little divot in the wall, we're going to orient our directions just because we're going to be kind of working here for a while. So this is the back right, we'll pretend, and this is the back left. So from the back right, you want to break in the floor going forward by three, and then break another row to the left. Fill this 2x3 in with grey concrete. Just to the left of the back two blocks, you'll place polished black stone slabs. Left of those monster spawners. Left of those upside down polished black stone slabs. Then above those with normal slabs. Left with monster spawners. Left with upside down slabs. Up with slabs. Left with monster spawners. Left with upside down slabs. Up with slabs and then left with two monster spawners. And you're going to keep doing this essentially. So you'll end up from this going forward with two monster spawners. And then you'll go right with the upside down slab. Up with slab. Right with monster spawner. Etc. And you're going to keep doing this until you should end up with three of these kind of stairs. Is it three? One, two, three, four. Correction. Four of these staircase portions. So I'm on two right now. This will be three. And at the top of the fourth one, you do not want to place monster spawners. Just like this. But you do want to make sure you have that two block gap there. Just like this. Instead, to the right, you want to place cyan terracotta and connect it into the wall as if you were to start another set of stairs. Like so. From the cyan terracotta as well, you will go, I guess from this perspective, forward with four monster spawners, so you'll run into the gray concrete. And then you will go all the way left until you are in line with the gray con the first gray concrete pillar there from these and two rows. So you'll place, it should be ten. Yes. Just like that. From each of those monster spawners, you will place dark oak trap doors that are essentially going to open up to the side, and you want, I believe it's six of these. 
Yeah, you want six of these dark oak trapdoors that'll open towards the sides of the monster spawners. Like this. Assuming I can play. These just suck to place. Like that. You then want to go left from this with four monster spawners. And you can actually bring each of those forward by two, so you'll have a four by four. I'll have to show you how to divide this later, because it does get a little bit weird. You'll then bring each of those left by three and connect those end three to the back wall, which is this wall again. Like so. You will take the rightmost row of monster spawners in these front two specifically and bring them each right by a row. You'll then do the same thing with Dark Oak Trapdoors that you did there going forward from these end two, and you said instead you want four Dark Oak Trapdoors. Just like this. There you go. You can, though, continue those monster spawners here along to the right by five. And then these end two can be brought back by six. And then left by 10, these end two again. And then from there you will go back by, or forward by six, I guess. And then from there you will go all the way right until you are two blocks short of the wall. I will give you this number here. It should be 20 blocks. Correction, 19, not 20. So you'll be three away from the wall instead of two. And again, you want the end two rows. So I'll add one right here. Where you have the dark oak trap doors there connecting kind of a portion of this S, you want to do the same thing at the other portion. Essentially, it should be perfectly in line. And it's again four dark oak trap doors. Although this is something different happening. Once I can place them, I'll explain it. <laughs> On top of these dark oak trap doors, you want to place iron trap doors. This is the my method of showing the little like pathway here. Like that. Now from this point you want to kind of line everything with bamboo trap doors. I will show you how it is. So on the staircase to start, well there's actually a couple more trap doors we have to place. Just everything left of this front row of gray concrete and the bottom two rows wants to be dark oak trap doors just opened up again. So I guess you can't go down here for whatever reason. I don't know. There's probably like a secret basement that, where they hide the things they don't want people seeing. But basically, it's just left of each slab and... Or I guess out from each slab and then there will also be a trapdoor right of each slab. So like, you notice here you can't place one there. Just don't worry about it. You'll want to make sure you have it over the monster spawner. At all points, you want at least a half a block of, I guess, coverage, quote-unquote. So it'll be up diagonally from each monster spawner and just directly to the side of each top trap door. And you really only need it on, well, you do need it on both sides actually on certain points. Like on this staircase here, you will need it on this side as well. Just like this. Preferably not with the extra 18 slab, or trap doors, I mean. Nothing too crazy. I'll explain the top because it gets also strange there. Like, it doesn't quite work logically, per se. This room is taking longer than I thought, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, yeah, this will be an hour, maybe. We're probably on, like, an hour and a half at this point? Maybe, I'm not sure. So, for the top, you want it to be outside, no, yes, outside of the cyan terracotta on these end two blocks here, and then you want it inside on these two monster spawners, like that. 
you also wanted inside on the entire row of monsters, or the entire front half of these monster spawners here. Although it's not on the Dark Oak Trapdoors on this half. And then again, you'll go all the way through, and once you hit the end there, you will just turn, and it will also be on, on these monster spawners. In means they're on the monster spawners, out means they're not. The left half we do not have to worry about, because that's where there's a thing. And then it's on th also on the monster spawners on the, like, other side of this. So you can see just right here, basically, on the other monster spawners. And this one actually goes onto the Dark Oak Trap doors and then passes them by four. So we'll end where this one curves forward, actually. I will show you again what I mean, but you can see how I'm placing them on the monster spawners. Like so, at the end here. Then on the this next portion here, this set of monster spawners will be on them. Make sure you just leave the gap though where the dark oak trap doors are so you can walk perhaps to nothingness. And then on this inside curve, it's basically for this entire curve, it stays inside until it can't. There's one point where you'll see it can't and like this side right here, this will have to be just outside of the monster spawners. It's not all in, I swear. You can see it isn't from this. Most of it is, but that is not. And I think everything else should be in, actually. Except for one little, little wall is not. Yeah, so if you just trace this all the way to the end here on the inside, you'll end up obviously having to go back outside on the far end here. Like this. And then back inside going along this wall, making sure that you leave the gap where the thing is there. And then when you go around this bend, you're still on the inside. However, when you hit this wall, you go outside. And then after, or before, yeah, after this wall, it's on both sides of the iron trap doors here where it's out. And then it will go back in for the like final wall. Which is this one. That's essentially what it, you should have. If you don't have it perfect, it doesn't. It's not a huge deal. Other than for the fences. And I can show you where those are placed. So. Heading back to the, the start here. You will find the... Essentially, if you walk up the staircases and go around this bend. It's in this first inner corner. Just kind of in front of the staircase like this. It's... Just connects to the trap doors and goes all the way up, does the fence. It's then, if you are kind of looking from it where I am and you just keep panning to the left, it's the first other corner you encounter, which is right here, up to the top with another big fence. It is, again, the next corner, which would be this corner here, kind of at the back. It is the furthest left bamboo trap door here on this portion, when the, or where the locker area will be it's then on the on this kind of portion of the bend where i don't have the iron trap doors it's in this front right hand corner there's nether brick fences also on the furthest left trap door still in line with that on the opposite side here it's there's nether brick fences in the same position you can see where that is and then there is one off either side of the end here, off of these trapdoors. Like that. I apologize, my ex explaining is getting worse. This is taking longer than I imagined. <laughs> anyway. From this point, we're kind of getting there. Take out your oak trap doors, and you want to find this kind of long line of bamboo trap doors. Above it, you want to leave a one block gap, and then just going all the way up to the ceiling with four rows, you want oak trap doors, and just lines of them. And this is just not going to be fun to place, really. But it will go all the way along the length of these bamboo trap doors. 
again, making sure that you have them perfectly in line if, because it will also line up with this nether brick fence right here. Oopsies. So you'll, they will open up against it. This is like a graded wall that's just kind of here. I don't know what it does, but it's here. And you will end up wanting four rows of these. These are just annoying to place, aren't they? At least the first rows will get better after. I'm gonna do it like this. And then you'll have to open all of them. Yay. Favorite. That's some random yeah, fences, whatever. Oh my god. Spam. There you go. Something like this. Now, I feel like that's all we can do with that inventory set. There's a couple more nether brick fences we can place, however, I would prefer to have the other thing there first, and you'll see why later. So if you clear your inventory and get out, polish blackstone stairs, Smooth stone slabs, purple slabs, light gray concrete, dark oak trap doors, darn those do return, polished tough, polished blackstone buttons, polished, well, let's go mangrove uh, buttons actually. We can use the, the polished blackstone stairs for the uh, this devious little little thing that I'm going to do. And we'll go birch trap doors. That's a fair set, I guess. So if you are where the cyan terracotta is here at the start, you want to just in these, this very corner, you'll place a polished blackstone stair with a purple slab on top. On the first block that you can above that, you'll place an offset on smooth stone slab with a light gray concrete above. Then place a dark oak trapdoor off of the what is left and top of the light gray concrete from this angle. Nice. Now, heading over to the left from here. This entire row of monster spawners, you want to connect all the way to the wall with polished tough. You'll then bring this... I guess front of the polished tough up with three rows. And for, I guess, all intents and purposes, bring the an additional row kind of along the side here back. You want to take this corner here, and you want to place a polished blackstone stair in it that faces essentially away from this little gap like this. You can see that it's a block in, and it we are seeing the flat side of the stair. Because you want a mangrove button on that. You could use a polished blackstone block, but since we have the stairs, we're going to go big brain mode. Uh, the rest of this side can also be filled in with polished tough to that same height of three tall. You then want to cover this entire area in, or this entire wall with polished blackstone buttons, except for the, essentially the entire left side, if you're looking at it from this angle, except for that top block. Because below that top button, you want a birch trap door that opens up against the right half here, so it kind of looks like if you just swung open a little door for this. You can then clear your inventory and get out. Chiseled tough bricks. Cobbled deep slit slabs. Red sandstone walls. Stone slabs, and we'll go mangrove button. Well, we're not, it's not even close to the end yet. Nether brick fence, lanterns, and just for the funnies, dark oak fence and black concrete. This will get us all the way to the sign, which will be fun for sure. So if you're still over here, you want to essentially just above this, you're going to place a chiseled tough bricks kind of platform which will act as a ceiling and also a little bit of a cap to it just like that i guess ceiling and cap do the same thing but whatever 
Directly above the hole here, essentially if you stand in front of this and look up, you want to place two nether brick fence moving down and then a lantern. That is one of two lanterns. If you head kind of around this and into this next area, between the two dark oak trapdoor sets, you want to, from the iron trapdoors, you'll count to the second monster spawner over, which is this one on both sides, and place a cobbled deep slate block. Place two red sandstone walls on top, and then another cobbled deep slate slab above that. If you are... So if you head to the, I guess, other side here, you want to count over to the... Eighth bamboo trapdoor. So first here is to the right of this. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You want to break it and in line with the monster spawners behind it, you'll place an upside down stone slab. Bring that up with two stone blocks and then a stone slab. In or er, on the top block, you'll place a mangrove button and also just left of this on the ceiling, so I guess if you stand left of it and look up, you'll place two nether brick fence and then a lantern. That is the, I guess, catwalks done. I don't really know why they have cut catwalks in these room or in this room, but anyway. Where can I find a measurement to use? I can find one right there, apparently. So if you head down to this red dude, you have this kind of conveyor belt that connects the left one to the right one, you'll find the frontmost block of it, which is this one right here. You want to trace this all the way up to the ceiling and place a dark oak fence there and bring it down by three. Assuming I can place blocks properly, that would definitely be helpful. From that dark oak fence, you want to place alternating nether brick fence and dark oak fence rows to the right of it, by five. And make sure that they're all four. Nether, since nether brick fence do not cling to dark oak fence, this is always a good combination if you want kind of this going on. And to the left of this fence, you want to do alternating rows that are seven, that, or go, that go to the left by seven. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Counted that out loud because I was doing four rows instead of just placing them to start. Anyway, underneath all of that, you'll place two rows of black concrete. This is where everybody's favorite comes in. The banner letters. Who would have guessed? They just never leave. Clear your inventory and get out a loom. A bunch of black banners. A bunch of... Is it cyan or light blue dye? Cyan dye, black dye, and a little bit of white dye. Smack your loom on the floor somewhere and open it. Inside, place a black banner with some cyan dye. Why did I do this differently? Whatever. You'll place, I guess, you'll do the line from top left to bottom right and top right to bottom left, which are bend and whatever the other one is, bend sinister. Then place in your black dye and do the full bottom half as black, which is perfess inverted. Place back in your cyan and do the line along the left and line along the right, which is pale dexter and pale sinister. There's your M. Next banner, do a line across the top, which is chief fess, and then put in a black dye and do this kind of diamond shape, which is the lozenge. I know that one by now. Put back in your cyan and do the line across the right and left, which is Pale Sinister and Pale Dexter. And then do line through the middle, which is Fess. For the K, you will not put in seven banners, but you will do the line from top left to bottom right and top right to bottom left, which is Bend and Bend Sinister. And then it'll do the full left half as cyan, which is Per Pale. Next letter, the E. You will do the line across the left, which is Pale Dexter, not the full half. Line through the middle, which is Fess, and then you want line across the top, which is Chief Fess, and then Base Fess, which is the bottom. We'll just leave a gap for the circular ones right now, that's fine. For the F, you want to do line across the top, which is Chief Fess, line through the middle, which is just Fess, and then line down the left, which is Pale Dexter. 
Next one, or next banner, you want to do from top left to bottom right, you'll do, it'll be cyan bend. Full top half, you also want a cyan, which is perfess, and then you want line down the left, which is pale dexter. The eye is just a line down the middle, which is pale. We can do one more letter, which is the N. So if you put in your black banner, you'll do line from top left to bottom right again, which is bend. Line down right, pale sinister, down, down, da, line down left, pale dexter. Head up to your black concrete, and going left to right, you will place your M, your A, your K, your E. Leave a one block app, A, one block app, F, R, I, E, N. Make a friend. That's what you should have for right now. If you get rid of all of these banner designs, you want to go back into your loom and, oh god, with your first banner, you want to place in a, I had to think, you want to do the, you want to place in a cyan die, do the line along the right, which is pale sinister, put in your black and do this kind of diamond shape, which is the lozenge again, put back in your cyan, do line across top, which is chief fest, line across bottom, which is base fest, and then line across left, which is pale dexter. Next banner, uh, put in black dye, put in a single white, and you want to do your little white circle, which is round hill. The furthest right gap will be the D, and the other two will be these kind of white circles. That looks like eyes. Oh my god, why? Anyway, there you go. We're one step closer. So, we can do some of the pipes and stuff that are kind of just around the room now. If you have a clear inventory, you want to get out polished basalt, cobbled deep slate walls, they always come back. Black carpet, this isn't a pipe, but I figured I would add it. Light gray concrete, stone slabs, sea lanterns, black concrete. Barriers, or again, if you need to use, like, glass or something, you can, I guess. And there was totally something else, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, shrimp mangrove log or wood, doesn't matter. So, if, again, we're going to pretend like the black concrete wall is the back. If you head to the right side here, you want to... We don't have defenses yet, that's cool. You want to come to this back right polished diorite, or it could be a block, colored block for you. From it, you want to count forward to and left by one in place going up here. Three stripped mangrove logs. And then go the rest of the way up to the ceiling with polished basalt. From that stripped mangrove also, you want to... Or this bottom stripped mangrove, you want to count forward by four. Sorry, forward by three and left two. And then up here, you can go all the way up to the ceiling with cobbled deep slate walls. From the diorite that this is sitting on, you will count forward diagonally right by one and break this polished diorite. And it's the same thing as per usual from each side block, down with three light gray, then a stone slab, sea lanterns outside of those stone slabs, and then black concrete underneath, and case it off with a barrier. From that barrier hole, you can count right by two to the wall, and then forward one and place polished basalt going all the way up here. When you hit the ceiling, you will end up having polished basalt coming out right here. Do we want to do this now? Yeah, sure I can. You want to have polished basalt coming out here until you are essentially above the fur or the dot closest to this on the sign there. I can give you the number too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's 16 polished basalt going left from that gray. From there, you go forward by 16. You'll have to break this fence. That's fine. Then left by seven. And from this, you will go all the way forward. Again, you'll have to go through these trap doors here. You gotta get around them first. That's the tough part. 
And you also want to bring this polished basalt here on the corner all the way back until you are one further than the polished diorite. I will give you this number as well. It's 24 back. 24? 23. 24. You will then go down with polished basalt, and you'll just kind of stop eventually and play strip mangrove below it. I have, like, about from, like, here strip mangrove going the rest of the way down. I think I have four visible above. One, two, three, four. I have five visible above, so I have it to there. If you want to change some of these corners and stuff to be more logically directional, I would recommend. Not really required. On this wall here, you have, or on this left wall, you'll take the middle half of this back window and count back by one. From the gray concrete above, you'll just connect to, the, to that polished basalt. I think that's all of the confusion here, at least. There's definitely more to go in this room, but just not particularly with that. Head to the front right-hand corner, which would be this corner here. If you are on it, you will count back and place a polished basalt. Left of it, a cobbled deep slate wall. In front of that wall, a polished basalt. And each of these can be brought all the way up until you hit the polished tuff. Like so. From the, I guess, front half of this, or the... The furthest right block, you will count forward by... If you're highlighting whatever this block is on the floor, you'll count back by four. And bring this up with polished basalt until you're like two blocks into the polished tuff. Which is what I have, at least. Now, you want to kind of head back to this doorway here. Sorry, that was random silence. From this gray concrete, if you're just kind of right of it, on this polished diary, you'll count right by two and back by one, and place 12 polished basalt moving up right here. Bring this right a row and both of these rows each back a row. Like so. You'll then place a row of polished basalt coming out of the wall that goes basically until it's directly on top. So you have a sideways row like this. And then you'll place another row on top of that that is just two sticking out of the wall. Bad explanation, but there you go. From the back right-hand side of this, if you're on the polished diorite to the right, you want to count right by two and place a row of polished basalt that is a whopping five blocks tall. And you'll do the same thing where you bring it right a row and either of these rows back a row. Because this one is further out, though, it's a bit different. So you want to take this front half of the polished basalt and bring it forward with some sideways polished basalt. And then from the wall, you'll place three sideways polished basalt, moving out a row above, and then two a row above that. Again, bad explanation, but that's what you should have. There's one more polished basalt pillar that is at the back, I suppose, kind of at the back. If you head to the original one that we made with this strip mangrove here, you really just want to be two. You want to be three blocks back and one block left from it, and you will kind of be over the edge here again. But you'll have basalt or polished basalt going from floor to ceiling. Now there are two things left. You can clear your inventory now. The two things are boxes and the old. Uh, things at the back, and we should be able to actually get enough to do both of them at the same time. So if you clear your inventory and get out polished blackstone slabs, polished tough slabs, black concrete, snow, that's a fun one, item frames, you actually need the barriers again, except to put in the item frame this time. Polished blackstone buttons. Stripped spruce. And spruce slabs. That will get us almost everything done. We'll just have that hallway to do at the front, which shouldn't be very bad. 
So, if we're going to start with this doorway actually here where the vent ends up going, or the, where you end up getting chased by Huggy. Above this polished blackstone slab, you will break three polished andesite. The top block and a half you will fill in with polished tuff. Above this, place a polished blackstone button, and just kind of to the, if you're looking at it, to the right of the middle block, you'll leave a one block gap and break these two, and place snow. Left snow, you'll place an item frame with a barrier in. At the back here, you want to... You can do this however you want. There is really one, actually, that is kind of in your way, or that you will want to be concerned about. Get rid of your snow. Also, I'm going to polish tough stairs. I forgot those were here. If you head to the right side, and if you are on this first polished andesite here uh, above the wall, you want to count up by four, and back by four, and break this polished andesite. We're going to actually do a little bit more inventory management. Get rid of item frames and barriers, and get out... Polished andesite slabs and bamboo fence. Anyway, in this gap here, you want to place a polished andesite slab. Left of it, you want to place eight polished blackstone slabs. And then you will have the next row be upside down slabs. It is also eight. And you'll keep doing rows of eight. Of the polished blackstone until you reach the opposite side. Which you should end on 7, according to my calculations. Yes. Which you can then break two blocks above this, and you'll place a upside down polished tough slab in the top block. You will fill all these in the back, or behind them with black concrete. Now, one thing worth mentioning. If you end on an upside down slab, you'll do this. If you on a right side up slab, you'll have a polished andesite slab in the wall just inside. And then you'll break two blocks above that, and in the top block you want an upside on polished tough stair. And then you'll just fill in the back with black concrete, as per usual. You will need behind the stair if you care about lighting. Now, before I introduce to you the rest of these, on this one, you want to take not this furthest right set of the slabs, but this next set to the left. And you want to... If you're on the furthest right slab, you'll count left by three and place going left three strip spruce. Bring each one up by one. We're going to start from the left with each of these just because it is easier. So if you head to the far left and this hole in the wall here, you want to essentially from the polished andesite behind the bottom half, you will count back one and place an upside down polished blackstone slab right there. Then, whoa, we'll bring it right by four. And this time you will go up and to the right with these rows of five. I just am going left to right this time instead because uh, each of these started from the left on my original build. So you'll end up just doing fives until you reach the other side where you'll end up with like two or something, which is what we actually have here. And again, don't forget to do the little doorway and fill it in if you need to like this. I forgot the doorway on the other side, that's great. I mean, I need you need to come back over here anyway, so might as well. If you are on the polished andesite above this doorway here now on the left, you will count up by two and back by three. Correction, back by four, so just count one more back and place two upside down slabs here. And then this will just be going by twos down and to the right until you reach the other wall. Yeah, th this room this room was annoying when I originally made it just because of like this and everything. It's just a weird room in general. But doing a tutorial on it, I'm now realizing that I really did not have it that bad originally. Because, oh my goodness. Especially because I'm trying to do this all in one day. Like, you know. At least all of this room. Because I did this room in the vent on the same day. Which is thankfully all. We'll do this. There we go. Be able to squeeze through there. Perfect. And then if you head back to the left, once you have hit the other side, I can physically prepare to where the next one is. Okay, yeah. If you are on the polished andesite that the upside down slabs come out from the wall from, you will count back by five. And down by one in place going out here, four upside down polished blackstone slabs. And this one will go up and to the right with these rows of four. 
I find it weird also because all of them I built left to right, except for maybe that one I didn't. But that one does end up having, like, it's uneven because it is 7 on the left and 8 on the right. I guess that was just me, uh, not particularly caring. Also, side note, if you want to add more of these than I have, by all means do it. It, honestly, probably the more the better. But I feel like this is a fair amount at the same time because it's not, like, crazy overwhelming, but... From the, again, the polished andesite that these slabs come out from, you want to count down by 9. And then back by 2 and place 3 upside down slabs moving out from there. And then again, you'll go up and to the right. Assuming you can place blocks in the right spot, that would be smart. Almost there, guys. This room is tough. Holy... I was like, yeah, it won't be that bad. I lied. <laughs> oh, well. I'd say at least the p it can't get any worse, but the pit room can definitely get worse. In fact, it's laughing at my misery right now, I'm sure. That's the amount that I have. Again, you can see it takes up a lot of the space, but it's not overwhelming, and it's also, it, it could certainly have more. Also, I keep forgetting this. On the back row of polished diorite, you want bamboo fences that just go along it. I won't forget it, I swear, because it's there now. Because you don't want to just walk over the edge. Why is there, like, I was talking with somebody about this. Like, what are all of these, like, rooms for that are just massive holes? I don't get it. Anyway, enough of those questions. Come to the right side where you have this gray concrete pillar and place two strip spruce coming out of the bottom of it forward. Now, if you just keep going, you want to find this next polished basalt pillar against the wall and place going behind it two spruce planks. Bring either plank left by one and then place spruce slabs on top. From the front left hand corner of that, you want to count left by three to this polished diorite and then forward one. Place a spruce plank with another one to the left. In front of that right spruce plank, you will place two strips spruce moving forward. Bring either strip spruce right by two, and then each of these up by one. From the spruce plank here, or this little row of two spruce planks, we'll take this far left one, and go back diagonally left by two from, and place a strip spruce. Bring it forward with a strip spruce, and then place a spruce slab on top of that. Leave a one block at moving forward and then place a 2x2x2 two by two by two of strip spruce kind of between these two pillars. You can see where I have that placed. Uh, that one's just so you can to kind of block off most of getting back here. I mean, I guess you still can, but it's something. Anyway, one more thing and this room is done. We still have the hallway to do, but... We're getting somewhere. Clear your inventory and get out. Bamboo slab, or a, a bamboo slab. A gray banner, a yellow concrete, and a dark oak sign. Looking at this doorway here, at the right half of it where you have the cyan concrete, you'll place an upside on bamboo slab. Above it, place a gray banner on the wall, and above that, place a yellow concrete with a dark oak sign. This little toy scan thing. How does Huggy get in that room if the door is closed, by the way? I guess he probably took a different path than us, because there's other doors. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. That's this room done. Now time for that hallway. Let's tackle the, like, 15 seconds that this hallway is going to take to build. Get out polished diorite. We'll texture the floor literally not right now, anyway. Uh, gray concrete. That's not even gray. White concrete. Pink concrete. Black concrete. Mangrove stairs, dark oak signs, polished deep slate walls, that's not even, okay, whatever, and black stained glass pants. So, inside this hallway, behind the red concrete and the cyan concrete on either side, you want to place four gray concrete. You then place two polished diorite in the floor. And then four more gray concrete. 
I'm actually gonna start by making Kissy on the wall here, or the, the Ban Ban Ah character. So on this front set of gray concrete here on the left side, you want to place a row of pink. Going left to right on top of this pink, you'll place another pink. Mangrove stair facing right, mangrove stair facing left, pink. Next row, white concrete, two pink, white concrete. Next row, pink, two white, pink. On either of these whites on the sides, you'll place dark oak signs, and behind the mangrove stairs, you'll place black concrete. That's signs and sides rhymed. You can then get rid of your mangrove stairs and dark oak signs and get out red concrete and cyan concrete. This will just help us in a second here. You want to place a row or two rows of white concrete on top of Kissy's head here. On the back side of the door, or on the other side of this doorway, which is these two blocks of polished diorite, you'll place a pink, then go, I guess, up diagonally right from this perspective with a pink, right one, down diagonally right. Look to the other wall and place a pink at the back here, then going again from this perspective, it would be right with a pink, up diagonally right, right. On the other side of this doorway, pink, right with a pink on the base here against the gray, up diagonally right and then right. You want to then fill in the kind of rest of these walls in with white concrete, making sure that you leave a 2 by 3 gap for the doorways. And making sure that you go as high as the cyan and red that is kind of right here at the front. Oh lord, there we go. In either doorway, you want to place a full row of polished deep site walls towards the front half. And then at the back half, you'll place a polished deep site wall at the bottom and top, and a black stained glass pane in the middle. Either of these want to be backed with black concrete the same way that we did before in the hallway just after the dome room. Oh, that was my lime glass. I was like, wait a minute. If you see this polished andesite corner here, you can break it and replace it with black because it's the corner and no one can see anyway. Uh, bring the floor back with polished diorite until you are one further than the gray concrete. Get rid of your polished deep slate walls, black stained glass panes, and we'll go pink concrete. And get out sea lanterns. So I was like, what is that material? Yellow terracotta, and we'll go, is it deep state tile stairs? It should be, yes. So at the back here, you want to place at the left behind the wall going up, three red concrete, and at the right, three cyan, like this. Going up from either of those, you'll place two yellow terracotta, bring that top yellow in by one, up one, and then in by what will also, I guess, be one to connect. Place another row of yellow on top. And you want to fill in this doorway a block back in with black concrete. This is the void in which Huggy emerges from, I suppose, because it kind of is what it looks like. It's immensely dark. I suppose you should notice something is off when you walk into a hallway in a game and all you see is just a, a black wall just staring at you. Anyway, uh... Above the doors on the sides here, you want to break the top row of white concrete and replace it with sea lanterns. Just, just above the door on both sides like that. Uh, then fill in your ceiling with deep slate upside down deep slate tile stairs the same way you've done before. So it's just essentially they face away from the middle here. Make sure you don't lock yourself out of the room as well because we don't really have a way back in other than the vent but that's too far away. Again, you will have to top this with blocks if you care about lighting. Texture your floor, but not too harshly. I'm literally probably just gonna add like two of each block or something. I did go outside of the hallway, deal with it. Just like that, you don't wanna do anything too crazy. Match as you matched with the rest of the build at least, preferably. Clear your inventory again and get out mangrove signs, 
glowing sack, white dye, and polished blackstone buttons. Ironically, all of this has to do with the door on the right. So above said door, you will place a couple of polished blackstone buttons. And in front of the top half of the door, you'll place a mangrove sign. Go down a line. So just press enter or whatever. And in all caps, type staff. Down a line again and type only. All in caps. Right click once with glowing sack, once with white thigh, and there you go. The make a friend room and friend hallway, I guess, is complete, finally. So, uh, yeah, that is going to be the end of this part of the tutorial. Uh, as you can tell, you're going to get the same after each time, except for part 10 gets a different one. But, yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, the next part will hopefully be soon. I just don't want to throw them all at you, like, in the span of a week or two. So, they'll be a little bit spread out, but not too much. Anyway, with that being said, have a fantastic rest of your day or night. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.